I'm driving this, the Fiat 500e. This is the Icon model, which means it runs a 42 kilowatt hour battery. It will do around 199 miles of range according to WLTP. I haven't seen more than 164, just being honest. Uh, but this is also a nine second zero to 62 car, which will top out at 93 miles per hour. So we're gonna jump in the car, we're gonna go for a drive, and let's see what the Fiat 500e Icon is all about. Because it looks good. Question is, does it drive well? Are you coming? No, you you stay there with your stick then. See you later, mate. Now, I realize I'm extremely late to the party on this one, and there's been many, many reviews on this car already. And that's for two reasons, really. I think the first one is I just really haven't wanted to drive it because I was a little worried as to what I was gonna find out. Because for those of you who've watched my channel regularly will know that I really love Abarth. And whilst this is a Fiat 500e review, this is actually gonna give me a really good idea as to what the future of Abarth holds because Abarth have said that in 2023, the Abarth will be electric. So this is the base platform. So what is it that we've got here? So right now I'm driving the Fiat 500e Icon. Now this is the kind of top of the range version alongside La Prima, which was the launch edition one. And you've got the, the lower end model, which I believe has a 24 kilowatt hour battery. This has a 42 kilowatt hour battery, which means it's bigger than things such as the Mini Electric and the Honda E. So it'd be interesting to see how it fares out. The first thing I'm gonna to touch about is the looks because the Fiat 500e or the new Fiat 500 platform anyway is a slightly a little bit more muscular than its old one. It's a little bit wider, it's a little bit longer and it looks a lot better. I mean, we're gonna to touch on the interior shortly because that for me is kind of where all the massive changes have come from and it's really, really welcome. What I do wanna do though is see what this acceleration is like because zero to 60 is in nine seconds and it's electric, so we should get some torque. Here we go. I tell you what, that's pretty nippy. It does die out when you get past like 40 and it starts to try a little bit harder. In terms of how it drives, this is where it becomes a little bit interesting because with electric cars, the skateboard per se, you know, your wheels and your battery is like located quite low down, which means handling is actually flipping good because you've got such a low center of gravity it means you can actually chuck this thing around now the 500e is of course still front wheel drive and still harps true to the original car it's not a four wheel drive platform it's nothing like that but it is a brilliant brilliant city car and i think that's the key point here it is a city car more than anything if your commute is you know reasonably short then this is a brilliant car to get because you know, day-to-day -day driving and you're stuck in traffic, an EV makes complete sense. And the more EVs I've driven, the more I've started to get that. And the more it makes sense. You know, why would I want to sit in traffic in a combustion engine car, pumping out fumes when all I'm doing is maybe 100 yards every 15 minutes? I'll tell you what, I really do like that little punch. It's, it's cool. And in fact, I'm in the range mode now, and I'll touch on modes in a second. I'll, I'll hold on into range, so I'll just give you a bit more info on, on the battery, the charging, etc. So because this is a 42 kilowatt hour battery, it benefits from the option of being able to fast charge. So you can charge this at, you know, 85 kilowatt hour chargers and it will do like zero to 30, uh, sorry, zero to 80% charge in around 35 minutes, which is very, very good. And that's the benefit, I guess, of having a smaller battery, it charges quicker. Where if you've got something like a 100 kilowatt hour battery, you would need to be hunting for those 150 kilowatt hour chargers to effectively offset the difference with battery size and battery charge cycles. In fact, I don't even know if that makes sense, but hopefully, hopefully it does. What I'm trying to say is the smaller the battery, the less range you get, but the quicker it charges. So if you find yourself a good fast charger, like a set 85 kilowatt charger, you will charge this in 35 minutes. Now the top of speed on the 500E Icon 
is 93 miles per hour, which is plenty. You know, you're not going to be breaking any land speed records in this, and it's not the kind of car which you'd expect to do that anyway. This is completely not a performance car. This is an everyday car for the masses, and arguably, it's probably one of Fiat's most important cars because the 500 in its combustion, uh, in its internal combustion engine form, um, was a huge success. They then moved on to creating the hybrid model again, which was a great success, and now this one. And that's why they've developed, or they've invested all of their R&D, their time into this car because they've had to make it a success. And so far, so good. Now, I'm in range mode. You get three different modes in this car. Range is the mode that tries to give you a decent balance between, I guess, performance uh, and economy. Uh, the range mode is effective like your one pedal driving. So you can drive the whole of your journey with just the accelerator pedal. And what I mean by that is when you lift off, you start to get the regen kick in. You can see I'm slowing down. I'm not even touching the brake. If I put it into normal mode now, which is the other one, if I go normal mode, that gives me all of that performance, but it also now starts to coast the car. So um, what I need to do is I need to effectively use the brake to slow down. But what that then means is that I'll start to suffer from range because I'm not getting any of that luxury with the regen. <sighs> it is really nice. I do like this. And then what we've got here, the last mode, is what I like to call Apollo 13 mode, which is called Sherpa. <laughs> Now, why do I say Apollo 13? I don't know if any of you guys have watched the film, uh, but there was that point where they were stuck in space and they had to effectively turn the, uh, the, well, the APU or the aircraft or whatever it was they're in. They had to start it with as minimal voltage as possible. And they were trying everything under the sun to get it moving and be as efficient as possible. And that's where Sherpa mode comes in. The idea of Sherpa mode is to maximize your range. Uh, and I think Fiat say that if you run the entire car in Sherpa mode in town, in urban, you could even get like near 200 miles of range. Now, I'm not sure and I've not tested it, so do your own research on that one. But Sherpa mode will switch everything off that it doesn't need to run the car. Your climate control, gone. Everything, gone. It is effectively in, well, limp mode is not the right thing to say, but it's just doing everything it can to save energy. Let's get out of Sherpa mode and back into range mode. Now, the looks on this 500E are really, really nice. I do like it. I think it looks lovely from the outside. The color for me is superb. It's got that kind of Abarth Biposto color, which I really, really like. But the key thing for me is the changes to the interior. Now, as you can see here, we get a 10.25 touchscreen, which supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And that's a welcome change from the 500 of old. Um, you have kind of different widgets in here, which work really, really nicely. The steering wheel is a nice flat bottom steering wheel, but most importantly, we get things such as cruise control, which again, very welcome. For those of you who drove the old 500s would know that cruise control wasn't an option. And actually, I think it was very much needed. We get things like lane assist as well, which can be quite intrusive, so I have turned it off, um, but it does work. We get a nice TFT uh, digital screen in front here, which you can set um, your speedo, you can set your sat nav to show. It's almost like a very basic, virtual cockpit, which I quite like. I think it's a really, really big improvement. Turning circle on this car is just brilliant. It's like a London taxi. Let's do another little acceleration. Yeah, that zero to 40 has definitely got a good amount of punch. In terms of the seats I'm in, extremely comfortable. The suspension setup is really nice. I really welcome the fact that we've got lots of kind of storage compartments in here. And also there's a nice gap in here as well where the gearbox would normally be. Of course, in an electric car, you don't have that. So actually it just creates a more kind of, it, it feels a lot more spacious. The other good thing with this is you get obviously with the Uconnect system and you, you get an app for the car. So effectively you can kind of warm up, cool down the car remotely. So for example, if you've got this car parked on the driveway, uh, and it's relatively cold outside, you can preheat the car to a, a temperature that suits you, which I think is a good thing. And actually it will help with things like preconditioning the battery, et cetera, before, before you set off. So you can use a three pin charger at home, uh, which tends to be a three kilowatt hour charge. So if you just do the basic man maths, uh, three kilowatt hours, if you had a 30 kilowatt hour battery, that's a 10 hour charge uh, on a three pin. We've got a 42, it's give and take, that'd probably be around about 12, 12 hours to charge this thing from zero to full on a three pin. If you've got a seven kilowatt hour wall box, which tends to be what most people will use, you can probably charge the whole car in maybe five or six hours maybe. 
So it's actually really reasonable. And obviously nowadays with more and more people getting kind of home wall boxes and changing their tariffs to off peak, that's where this actually is beneficial because you can charge the whole car for not a whole load of money. So yeah, final thoughts, I do like it. This screen works for me. The driving style, the position, everything is really, really cool. I like the tech, I like the looks. Would you go and buy one? I would go and buy one of these and I think it's going to be another huge success and as I said with a better performance of range and charge cycle than the Mini Electric and the Honda e, I think they've got some competition and I think this car will sell extremely well.